What are some of your goals in English? I'm guessing for most of you, it's to sound a little bit more confident, to be able to respond quickly, confidently when you're chatting with particularly a native speaker. It's knowing what to say when you need to say it. And ultimately, you want to feel like you are in control of the conversation, that you can actually respond in a way that shows you do know the language, that you have a great grasp of the English language. This really is a little bit more of a fun lesson. Do be careful with some of these expressions because with the wrong intonation, or maybe if it's the right intonation, you'll sound rather sarcastic and, well, borderline rude. So be careful. I'll try and give some examples of where you would say it in a funny, witty, conversational way. And sometimes when you might use it for a real purpose, when someone is being a bit of an idiot or being rude to you. So 10 fun expressions, use them carefully, use them wisely, and hopefully your conversation will be a little bit wittier, meaning you'll be adding banter, humor to the conversation and you will definitely sound more native. Now, before I share these 10 smart, sassy expressions with you, don't forget, do click that subscribe button and of course the notifications bell so you are notified when we upload new lessons. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and definitely follow us on TikTok. We are having a great time with TikTok at the moment. There are some fab short lessons waiting there just for you. So let's get started with one that can sound rather rude, but it's kind of fun as well. If someone is stating the obvious, they're saying something, telling you something that really, of course, you know, and sometimes it can sound a little bit condescending, patronizing to be telling you something. You could say, for example, if someone said to you, mm, eating too much cake, you know, you're going to put on a bit of weight. You could respond by saying, really, Sherlock? Or indeed, you could use the slightly stronger version of this. And I am going to swear now, so turn away or put your fingers in your ears if you don't want to hear it. No sh Sherlock. No sh Sherlock. Okay, I'm not gonna say that word again, just twice is enough. But essentially, that is alliteration there. So obviously the sh for the and sh for Sherlock kind of works quite nicely together. But the more polite version would be really Sherlock. Now, if you haven't guessed already, this obviously comes from Sherlock Holmes. Yes, the fictional detective, very famous, lots of different versions of it on Netflix and different television programs and films, but essentially the very famous fictional British detective. So you're essentially saying that someone is, well, really kind of stupid, it's insulting them by saying they're Sherlock because you're being sarcastic. Yes, very sarcastic. You don't actually think they're a smart detective. You think they're stating something that's obvious and that really is pointless telling anybody about. Now, if you want to learn English, you really should be studying harder. <sighs> yeah, no, Sherlock. Now, number two could be used in the wrong way with the wrong person if you're not careful is the Pope Catholic. Now, obviously, if you are using this expression with someone that is perhaps more religious, they may find this insulting. They may think it's blaspheming, blasphemous. Um, so be careful. But it can just be funny. It doesn't have to be rude. So if someone asks you a question like, uh, Layla, do you like chocolate? I could respond by saying, is the Pope Catholic? Meaning, yes. Obviously, of course, I like chocolate. So it is when you are responding in a way that is kind of saying, yes, that's a silly thing to ask me. Of course, the answer is yes. The Pope is definitely Catholic. And so you are saying my answer is definitely yes. For example, if I were to say to you, do you enjoy our lessons, guys? <sighs> is the Pope Catholic? Of course you do. That's a silly thing to ask you. Number three, rather insulting, so be careful how you use this, but again, 
if it's a friend, if it's someone that you are quite familiar with, then this could be a nice funny expression to use. Don't give up your day job. Don't give up your, hear how I'm saying it? Your day job. Don't give up your day job. Essentially, whatever that person has done, they've done it badly and basically they shouldn't do this thing as a career. For example, if your boyfriend cooks you a lovely, lovely meal and really it's terrible and it tastes really bad, you might go, sweetie, that was a, a lovely attempt, but you know, don't give up your day job. Don't think that what you're doing is particularly good. You're not good at it. So be careful, again, how you use it. Um, if, for example, you were to say to me and Sabra, oh, you know, you're an English teacher, really? Hmm, don't give up your day job. You're basically insulting us and saying we are crap at what we do. Um, be careful. It's usually when someone is, I don't know, playing uh, a game of football, but they're not a professional football player. You might say, Phew, don't give up your day job if they didn't score any goals. So it's an insult to what someone has done badly and you're saying they shouldn't choose it as a career. So again, it's sarcastic, but it's a great expression and one that you can definitely use regularly. Number four, using a comparison to insult someone. These are quite rude, actually. Uh, if stupid could fly, you would be a jet. So clearly a jet is a very big plane that definitely flies and you're saying someone is really, really stupid. Again, intonation is key here. It is so important if you don't want to sound rude, but you just want to sound like you're being funny, witty, you could say, if stupid could fly, you would be a jet. But if you say, if stupid could fly, you would be a jet. Then you can see there's a big difference in your attitude, your intonation with that expression. One, the first that I gave you the example, is kind of insulting someone but in a joking way. You're saying they're being a bit silly. The second that I gave you, the example, is just saying someone is plain stupid. And obviously you don't want to be doing that in the wrong situation with the wrong person. Number five, very sarcastic. When something you think isn't particularly important but perhaps your friend, your family member, might be behaving in such a way that it's really important. Oh, Sally and Bob got back together again. Ooh, alert the media. Alert the media. So obviously if you're telling the media, you're saying it's a big news story, but this is sarcastic. It's not. If you've got friends that are always on again, off again, breaking up, getting back together, then it gets a bit boring, a bit tedious. And saying, oh, alert the media, it's like, what's the big deal? They're always breaking up. They're always getting back together again. So a great example of a nice simple expression that we commonly use in English. When we are being sarcastic, when we think the news we've been told is not really big news at all. Number six, on the same theme, when used in a sarcastic way, you're essentially saying, is this really important? I'm not sure you really need to tell me. I'm not sure I care, to be honest. What else is new? What else is new? Now, in fact, this can be used in quite normal conversation. So what else is new? What have you been doing? Genuine, sincere. Sarcastic, sarcasm. What else is new? Sarah turned up late for work today. What else is new? She's always late for work. So again, you're saying this is something that really isn't news to me. It's something that I expected to hear. And to be honest, I don't care very much. What else is new? Number seven, this is my favorite and for sure, I use this regularly. If brains were dynamite. Now this is actually part of a conditional sentence. In fact, the full expression would probably be, if brains were dynamite, you'd blow yourself up. So if your brains were dynamite. Now, I think all of you are probably scratching your head. If anyone's got any similar expression or if you have this expression in your language, do let me know. I'm very curious as to whether it's specifically a, a weird English expression, but essentially you're calling someone stupid. If brains were dynamite, you would blow yourself up. We don't usually use the second part of the conditional, just the first. Clearly your brains are not dynamite, so it's very hypothetical second conditional. 
um, but you're calling someone stupid. Sometimes I might even just put it in an emoji with a brain emoji and a dynamite, the TNT emoji, like this. And basically you're saying, someone is stupid, whether it's the person you're talking to or talking about, more likely. Um, then yeah, it's just a really fun, creative, it's actually idiomatic, obviously, uh, expression. So for example, I might say to uh, my husband, if he's doing something particularly stupid, like, I mean, he's not stupid, he's quite clever most of the time. Um, for example, if he bought nappies for our baby that were too small, I would be like, oh, if brains were dynamite, you know, you are a bit stupid. Why did you buy a smaller size? I think all my examples are going to be baby related these days. That's all on the brain is just baby, baby, baby stuff. But you get the idea. Think of someone that has done or said something stupid and write it in example. Tell me about what they did or said and then add dot, 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 if brains were dynamite. Okay, have you got a partner, uh, maybe a son, a daughter, who wakes up and they're really grumpy or they just generally can be in quite a grumpy, temperamental mood, in a bad mood? You could say, Someone woke up the wrong side of the bed today. Someone woke up the wrong side of the bed today. And essentially you're saying, there is no right or wrong side really, is there? But you're saying, well, if there is a wrong side, they woke up on it and that's why they're in a bad mood. I can use my husband for this example because he frequently wakes up on the wrong side of the bed. Um, in fact, maybe we should swap sides. No, I'm joking. <laughs> um, but yes, if someone is quite temperamental and grumpy, like me, when I'm hungry, perhaps, or if I haven't had enough chocolate that day, you could say, oof, Layla, I think she's woken up on the wrong side of the bed today. So she's in a bad mood. Again, the way you say this to someone, you don't want to irritate them, annoy them any further than you need to. But sometimes it's a nice way to say, come on, you don't need to have this attitude. Come on, did you wake up on the wrong side of the bed today? Get it together. Get your act together. Make sure that you kind of come out of this bad mood. So it can be quite functional and useful to use. Number nine, funny, sarcastic. And if you've got a friend or a family member that maybe tells you what to do too often, or they're generally just a little bit nosy, they're interested in your business all the time, in what's going on in your life, and you don't want them to be, you could say, I'm returning your nose. I found it in my business. I'm returning your nose. I found it in my business. You could always play with some of these expressions. Like this one, you could say, is this your nose? I found it in my business. So again, it's the sarcasm and we would use it in a way as to say, look, I really appreciate your input, but that's enough. I don't need you telling me what to do or interfering anymore. Again, having that confidence, that assertiveness to basically tell people to shut up. Okay, this is a great one and very much connected to, well, technology, things that are going on at the moment. So anyone that regularly uses a computer, which is most of us, maybe not my grandmother, will understand this expression. When you are so busy, your brain is a bit kind of frazzled, it's tired, you've been doing so many things, you could say, my brain has too many tabs open. My brain has too many tabs open. Okay, so basically you're managing so many different things. This is kind of like having lots of balls up in the air, juggling lots of balls up in the air. That's a common expression to say, we've got so much going on. We're trying to do 101 different things. Another expression that has the same meaning to do 101 things. Um, but yeah, you're just like, oh, sorry, look, I meant to call you. My brain has just got too many tabs open at the moment. So you're basically not able to focus on one specific thing. You're doing lots of different things because you have to, because you're busy. And there we have it. 10 witty, fun, smart, sarcastic expressions that I hope you'll be able to use carefully in conversation with people. Try using some of these expressions with good friends and just explain you're using some of these expressions and testing them out. If they think you've sounded too rude, too offensive, then get them to tell you how to kind of adapt your intonation. Remember, intonation is key with most of these expressions. If you want to sound really harsh, really strong, really rude, 
then having that attitude, that intonation behind it will be effective. If on the other hand, you want to be funny, witty, and just to have a little bit of fun, banter, then use a more jolly, friendly intonation. And there we have it, guys. I hope that you enjoyed those expressions. Do comment below and add one of your own if you can think of one. And that's it. I'm gonna go now. I really do feel like my brain has got too many tabs open. <laughs>